Podtackler, the unofficial Halo Universe podcast presents episode 762, Coding in the Halls, recorded live on December 10th, 2020. Hello everyone and welcome to Podtacular, the unofficial Halo Universe podcast. I am your host, Duststorm. I am your co-host, Godzilla T. And DJ is not with us tonight. Uh, he said that he was getting some new streaming equipment uh, for his birthday. His birthday was yesterday, the 9th. So happy birthday, DJ. For I don't know if you're going to be listening to this afterwards, but uh, thank you for being a part of the podcast. We appreciate it. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, he was getting some new streaming gear. I don't know if it was to replace some streaming gear or what, but it hadn't arrived yet. So I'm guessing his streaming setup is currently out of commission. So he will not be joining us tonight, which is kind of unfortunate because we actually have some infinite news for once. A little bit, a, yeah. A, a uh, substantial amount of infinite news compared to the little bits and pieces that we've gotten since July. So we actually have something to talk about tonight. <laughs> We are going to be going through the latest update that we got dropped from Waypoint on Tuesday. But before we do that, we have our Protacular community update to go through, starting with our recap of Fragon Friday. GT, how did that go? It actually went really well. We had our first cross-platform game night. Yeah, because, you know, MCC bring cross-platform, and that's what people voted for. So that was kind of fun. It was. We... We did things a little differently. Uh, we had a mix of uh, people playing on PC and play- people playing on uh, Xboxes. So, and everything yep. seemed to went really well. We did matchmaking. We did customs. I forgot to download the customs to the PC, so we had we got to <laughs> wait five minutes while I did that. I did think ahead and put put the customs up on my file share in order to be able to download them to MCC from on the PC. I just never bothered to download them. So. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. There's always next time. Small glitch. <laughs> yeah. We've got the whole holiday season to try it again. So, mm-hmm. so not, not a problem there. But yeah, it was interesting. I think we had two confirmed people that were playing on PC and the rest were console. I think. Well, I know I was playing on PC and I think. Bobby was. Bobby was. Because he was, he had the little keyboard icon by his yeah, name. Yeah, I was using controller, but someone actually, else I made. Was, I actually, I was kind of cheating. I was bouncing back and forth whenever we would get uh, start doing a, a race. I would switch over to keyboard and mouse. <laughs> nice. I will be redoing my desk situation as I kind of move my stuff over to my new PC that I got parts for. So with that, I'll probably redo some stuff and get my proper setup for doing gaming with my PC and we'll try to be doing PC more often. I would yeah. like to get better at mouse and keyboard. I used to be decent at it, but it's been so long since I've been a been dedicating trying to do mouse and keyboard. So yeah, I will never be good at mouse and keyboard. <laughs> I, I've come to that, that conclusion. You can give me the best keyboard and mouse in the world. I suck at it. <laughs> I just I don't know why I just can't get the feel for keys, keyboard keys, not not keys. Yeah, the person. <laughs> it's definitely a departure from the controller. You know, I even I think my biggest problem is adapting to moving with the keyboard. You know, your physical forward, back, left, right. I think that's yeah my biggest problem. I've got my little Joy-Con thing that works. I mean, it works all right. And, you know, in a game like Halo, where there's minimal amount of buttons, it, it works okay. But when you get into more complex games, it, it it runs out of buttons pretty quick. Yeah. And it's really different, too, with the... Because with control, you have all directions you can go in while you're walking. And with keyboard and mouse, it's either Four. straight... Yeah, well, eight. Combined two, but 
Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. No, four. It's a lot more limited. <laughs> it's technically eight because you can do two, but you can do two keys at once. But yeah. yeah, yeah. So we'll be doing another game night tomorrow. Uh, I will not be there, unfortunately. I still have some last minute editing I need to do for the Halo Mole finale, which is coming out this weekend. So I don't think I'll have time to be there, unfortunately. But we'll be putting the poll up again in our Discord for those who want to come over and play with us. Again, we'll put the poll out for MCC, which will be cross plat, or Halo 5, which will be on Xbox only. So hop into our Discord to uh, go check that out. Uh, for the Achieving Halo. I uh, did not do that this past weekend again, trying to get the Halo Mole finished. So Saturday, tomorrow, or two days from now, when we're recording, this is my last day with that. And it'll be so nice to finally be done with, with that thing. Uh, over on the website side of things, we have a new Machinima Monday. This is for a new Machinima called Halo Grimfall. They released a cinematic trailer that was done by Oliver Smart. Uh, and music composed by the Marcus Hedges Trend Orchestra. It is not any indication of the actual uh, machinima itself, but it is a really well-rendered piece uh, for the trailer. And the description for the machinima is a unit of Unicid's newest Spartan fours are forced into an impossible choice when they are ordered to assist in a potentially galaxy-changing mission by a shadow organization not ready for peace. So it's a animated or the trailer's animated, but the machinima is in game Halo five and it's going to be an episodic series. So if you want to learn more about that, then head on over to our website, podtagler.com and check out the post over to company commendations. We've got a few that we're going to hopefully be knocking out here over the holidays thanks to some recent additions to matchmaking, which we'll get to here in just a moment. The ones that we have closest to being finished is Lawnmower, which is getting splatters. We have 89 of those remaining. And with the introduction of Castle Wars, hopefully that drops pretty quickly to being complete. Hopefully. Hopefully, yes. Um, and then we've got getting headshots and getting kills with standard weapons as our next two in the chain. Um, as for Tales from the Foxhole this week, we have a couple of Discord updates. We have MH Cosplays doing some more little costume pieces that he's been working on. Uh, the latest additions that he has posted over in the Discord is a armband, a leg band, and a little uh, helmet, flashlight, and camera attachment looking thing. Uh, and that's over in the community creations section of our Discord. And then, um, I th actually, I think that was it that we had for this week. Just checking real quick. Yep, that was it. Uh, so thank you, Emish Cosplays, for your continued posting of that. Really cool to see the progress that you're making on all of your commissions. And we look forward to seeing what more you have to bring to the Halo community. On the matchmaking side of things, what we got, GT? Well, as of December 8th, uh, in celebration of 343 Day, Global Double XP for the holidays, so get in there and grind out your 152. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as playlists, we have Warzone Turbo, Castle Wars, Holiday Fiesta, and Husky Raid live for the holidays. <laughs> Turbo. At that. I'm contractually obligated to myself to say that every time. <laughs> Sorry, people. My mute button for dust is broken. <laughs> for the Master Chief Collection, we have Grip Ball back on the court. And Yay! Shoddy Snipers was returned to the armory. See you, Shoddy Snipes. We, we don't really appreciate you too much. I know there are people that do, but we're, we're not those people i mean it's, wrong, fun, it's, a fun, it's a fun game type if you're playing against people similarly skilled than you this is true the problem with the game the matchmaking is or the problem with that particular game type is there are people that live eat and breathe that game type <laughs> yep uh, and then and, you just you know, get slaughtered yes. by snipers from you don't know where 
pretty uh-huh. much. Yeah. That's why I'm a proponent of skill-based matchmaking. <laughs> <laughs> yes, which is one of the because reasons why uh, Halo works well with that. It does make the game more fun. Yeah, it, it really does. I honestly don't care if it takes longer to find a game. <laughs> I don't even think it really... Well, it does take a little bit longer, but not much longer. Like, there are thresholds. Honestly, at the point, at the level I play, and this is my experience, at the level I play, I have never had to wait an extremely long time for to find a game. There are plenty of people in my talent bracket to where I'm able to find games relatively quickly. Now, I know the higher skilled players, they have trouble finding games and they tend to play the same people over and over again because the number of people in their skill bracket is much smaller. (laughs) And I'm not knocking the people that are good at Halo, but I don't want you in my game. Yeah. Because your skill makes my enjoyment of the game diminish tremendously. But that's why there's a skill-based matchmaking, and right. it's there, and it works. It it works. Mm-hmm. Yes, I, with the latest revision to it, I've, I've really enjoyed it. Yep. And I know there's a lot of people that disliked it at the beginning, but like a lot of, I think a lot more people really like how the true skill two in Halo is implemented and works. Mm-hmm. Like, I know, I know. For us, when it was implemented, it was it felt really good, and getting matches that was within my skill set seemed to be happening a lot more frequently. Yeah, I mean, overall, Halo Five has done a pretty good job of that for me. But with the true skill, with the true skill two rollout, it got a lot better. Yeah. All right. And pins, there's still a range. <laughs> there's still yes, the range. There is still a range. Of people. Um, like I said, but it's not, you know, you don't have one person getting 50 kills and all the rest of you getting three kills. Exactly. Um, yep. You know, that to me is not a fun game. To me, a fun game is where at least three quarters of the players in the game are within five kills of each other. No, I, I know you were I know you were being sarcastic, Pens. I was just kind of playing along with it, so you're you're fine. Uh let's see. On the MCC development update, we have a currently slated uh bug fix release type of thing for December for MCC. It's still not ready quite yet, so Postums hasn't uh have doesn't have a full collection of what's going to be coming with the next update. But here are some of the targeted changes that he listed over on the forums last week. Specular issue causing skins to appear darker in gameplay. Scope and vehicle monitors not rendering stencil outline. View screens and cinematics not displaying properly. Issues with higher gamma settings on Series X and S. Input matchmaking icon display issues in roster. And toggle crouch timing window issues. On unlimited frame rate for Halo 4, Halo 2 Anniversary, and Halo Reach. Once there's more details on what's going to be coming in the update, I'm sure they will post more about that over in the forums. Unlimited power! Oh, unlimited power! Unlimited frame rates. Unlimited power. (laughs) Can anybody guess what's been on rotation on the TV around my house? What? Someone has been playing the Star Wars movies back to back to back to back. back. It's like... Gotcha. It's like five days last week. At any one time, you could have watched at least four of the Star Wars movies at the same time by browsing channels. At the same time. In other words, four different stations were playing four different Star Wars movies. Okay. All right. Sure. Okay. (laughs) Is it just background noise at that point? Because, like, how can you watch four at once? No, you could. You had your pick of which one you wanted to watch. Oh, gotcha. Okay. They were playing four different stations 
We're playing four different Star Wars movies at the same time. So you could switch through channels and find four separate Star Wars stories. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. It's like, Sorry. really? People? Gotcha, okay. I was confused. And then they were doing marathons from beginning <laughs> well, of to course, end. Of course, because, I mean, that's, that's what they do during the holidays is marathons. That's all they do. <laughs> it's like everybody had the same idea for TV marathons this year. Let's all play Star Wars. Hey, Frizzle. How you doing tonight? Thanks, Disney. Or thanks, Disney. D- Disney. 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 And thank you for the six months, Frizzled. Yeah, definitely. Appreciate it. All right. Next. Next is the big news drop. The creme de la creme. Well, for now, <laughs> of Infinite News. We have a Infinite News drop over on Halo Waypoint that came out this past Tuesday, which just happened to coincide that it was 343 Day, being the... I can't imagine that was planned or anything. <laughs> right. So, yes, on, Tuesday, on this past Tuesday, which ended up being the 343rd day of the year, 343 dropped their Inside Infinite December 2020 update. And boy, is there a lot of stuff in here. Burning down the house. Oh, um, hey, guess what? If Halo Infinite isn't done yet, just the heads up. I mean, is, is anyone anyone surprised, really? Like, like, And really? it wasn't done in July when they released the trailer either. So, <laughs> just, you know, wanted no. to get that right off the top there. No, it wasn't. Um, so we've got. I, I'm very impressed with this. Uh, I read yeah. through this uh, and I'm. Very impressed with the information they put in here. We've we've got quite an update to go over. There's there's not like in the grand scheme of things, it's not a lot of stuff, but they do address a lot of what the community's been talking about and concerned about, and things that have really just been kind of an unknown for a while since July, since that was kind of the last time that we actually got a real substantial amount of infinite news. So mm-hmm. this covers uh, a little bit of everything, but there, it's it's not a huge update in a way because we st- we still don't have a lot of news about the the story outside the E three trailers or what's uh, multiplayer wise and and that kind of stuff. So there's there's still quite a bit of things to um, well, I mean, to, we've got to look forward to. I, yeah, yeah. I'm wondering these are these pictures that are in here are probably screenshots from the game. I'm assuming. I, I so mean, the, I, I may be assuming wrong. Yeah, it, it's hard to tell because, well, so for those that are watching on Twitch, I was trying to get it to where I could get my desktop shared over, and unfortunately, that's not working. So, if you go to the update, uh, I think the multiplayer screens, because they have multiplayer map work in progress, so I'm guessing those. Are mm-hmm. screenshots if they're work in progress? I'm I'm thinking because I'm thinking those all are screenshots. These pictures it's, look freaking awesome. Yeah, it's it's hard to tell because it, at one point it's like okay, it could kind of seem like a concept art, but at the same time it seems like there's details and too many spots for it to not be concept art. Mm-hmm. Um, they've got. You know, they've got a couple of photos in here of weapons. One of them is of the sniper rifle, and the other one is the Spanker rocket launcher. And mm-hmm. it looks like they have it in the ricochet, or not a ricochet, a uh, breakout arena. <laughs> you know, that same grid pattern that was on the, yeah, the same grid pattern yeah. that was on the floor of the breakout arena, it has that same vibe. And it, it's just weird. But, I mean, the detail is, uh... Yeah. So there's actually, it kind of looks like one of those pedestal looking things, like on mm-hmm. the Infinity or something like that. It, and if you look in the background too, you kind of see vehicles on one side, and you see kind of one Spartan looking over the table. So yeah, it kind of looks like, a like table. an armory. Yeah, is kind of the way I looked at it. But. Yeah. Breaking news from the Game Awards: They just dropped that you can actually get Master Chief. And a gravity hammer as as purchasable items in Fortnite now. Uh, there's there's a new Master Chief bundle that has it's a five item bundle and 
There is, so you can get the Master Chief as a character, the Gravity Hammer as your pickaxe, a Pelican as your glider. There's a little Warthog that's included in there as well. And I don't know what the fifth item is, but that is breaking news from the Game Awards. So seems like all those leaks that were out there uh, running around the last couple of weeks were in fact true. Shame on them for leaking that. Anyway. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. I It's been a while since I've played Fortnite. And, uh, I have yet to play Fortnite. Now, now I might have a reason to, to go back and, and try it. I mean, when I played Fortnite, it was it was interesting. It, I mean, it's different gameplay. I, I enjoyed it. It's not like... Yeah. Not like I, I wouldn't go back and play it again. But, obviously... Other games I, I find more enjoyment with. But anyways. So yeah. That's the breaking news. And uh, back to the regular regular podcast. Back to the infinite update. We're going to schedule program of Potekir. Oh. Anyway. Um, so where do we start here? <laughs> so let's let's just start with... I mean, Joe, Joe's back. So let, he, he has a little excerpt at the beginning. And let's... Let's just kind of, I, I want to read through his opening statement and his closing statement, just because for, for those who don't know, Joe Staten's a veteran when it comes to Halo. He was there as part of the development team for Halo CE through Halo Reach while, at, while it was at Bungie, and he was in charge of writing, design, cinematic director, creative director, a whole bunch of different hats when it comes to the development of Halo. Voice acting. Yep, grunt voice acting. So let, let's just start with that, because uh, there's a little tidbit of info in there <laughs> to talk about as well. Uh, start, so starting off, hey everyone, I'm Joe Staten. If you've been a long time part of the Halo community, you may already know me. If you're new to the Halo community, hello, it's great to meet you. I was part of the Bungie team who made Halo CE, Halo 2, Halo 3, Halo 3 ODST, and Halo Reach. I came up for the design side of these projects, wearing many different hats over the years, including writer, cinematic director, creative director, and even a voice for the grunts. After each shift, I became a Halo fan, cheering on 343i from the sidelines, but I've spent the last four months immersing myself back into the Halo universe, and it's my honor as a creative director to help our team ship Halo Infinite in fall 2021. Yep, that's when the game is coming out. And from now until then, every one of us at 343i and our great partner teams will be building, testing, and polishing an experience we hope all of you love. I joined 343i right as the team was wrestling with feedback from the July campaign demo. This discussion boiled down to one fundamental truth. We needed more time to do things right. That included pushing hard in the fall, giving the team time to recharge over the holidays, and then coming back in January to finish the game at a healthy pace. Because if it is in the fall of 2021 is just the beginning of the adventure. I'll be back at the end of the update for some closing thoughts, but for now, Brian, take it away. So there's our first little tidbit. Halo Infinite is coming out, well, tentatively. <laughs> I'll just put that little <laughs> caveat in there. Currently scheduled for fall of 2021. And a lot of people have, have, have made, made a mental note that uh, there's a there's an anniversary in in 2021 for Halo. True, there is. And and a certain uh someone higher up at 343 may have made a tweet that kind of implies a certain something that may or may not happen. There may be something special happening this year. Yes. Just other just maybe. Release of, other than the release of Infinite. Yes. I'm looking forward to seeing what those plans are. Yeah, because last time we had one of these decade anniversaries, we had a Halo Fest. Yes, now with, we did. With the world as it is. Uh, yeah, that's... I it might still, be a virtual uh, Halo Fest. Yeah, I don't know. Depending on how it things go. It depends on how things go. With yes. the current state of things and the way things are progressing... We might actually be able to have a normal convention. We might. Might. We might. And of course... That, that's the big question. We won't know until this fall. Right. So, we'll see what's going to happen. 
But I do imagine that they will probably be doing something special throughout the year in some way. Right. Whether that's digital, whether that's yeah. in person at some kind of convention or a hybrid of both, we'll just have to uh, wait and see. But I'm hoping for something. Well, as long as things work out, then something in person, I think, would be really cool. It would be really cool. Unfortunately, I do believe that if it is something in person, I will not be able to attend. Like I said, last year was kind of my one shot. So, mm. yeah. we'll see. Yeah, we will see. That's the first big little tidbit. There is a whole slew of interviews on this update as well. Uh, first set of interviews is with the art and graphics team. And we have uh, Sparth, Neil Harrison, and uh, Annie Shastri on to talk about a lot of the things a lot of feedback things that came back from the July update. Uh, for the most part, we have pretty much what everyone kind of assumed already. They they were pretty much had the same concerns that we did with the July update as far as how it looked, how it feels. So, I mean, it kind of just goes to show that yeah, like they they care as much as we do when it comes to what they what they put out. So, as far as what was shown off in July. They definitely acknowledge that it's not where they wanted it to be. They there are still things in the pipeline that weren't ready and that are still mm-hmm. in the works. And I mean that's that's what happens to dev. There's only certain milestones that you can hit, and if once deadlines come up, then you only have a certain amount of time to squeeze certain things in. So that's just kind of how things happened. Yeah, they they do say that you know they it did hurt them to show off infinite in that state but they yeah. wanted to show us something because it we had been going through such a dry period when it come to halo infinite you know they wanted to get something out there and with the fall release they really did need to start the marketing campaign uh it wasn't until after the release of that that they decided that it probably would be a good thing to Suspend the release until next the till twenty twenty one. Mm-hmm. Which I mean, it sucks. It's certainly one of those things that you don't really want to hear or see. But at the same True. time, at the same time, it's if it's what's best to make sure the game is going to be the kind of polish and caliber that they want it to be. Then, like they should do that. I'd rather have a game delayed and in the in the in the way that they want fans to experience it, and the and the polish and cleanliness that they want the game to feel and be experienced, then to rush it out, put out a product that is going to be riddled with bugs, riddled with issues, riddled with mm-hmm. things needing a day one, a huge day one update that replaces the whole game, or who knows, Halo two, whatnot, <laughs> or a Halo oh, two, or a Halo MCC, or a Halo five. Did I say that out loud? Just maybe. Just oh, I, I swore I was just thinking that. No, I, you know <laughs> i I get that. You know they were having they were behind their they weren't getting to the markers that they wanted to get to, but they wanted to show us something. Yeah, me personally, I'm glad they did. I wish they would have been able to go on and continue the marketing campaign. Because I'm lo- really looking forward to what they what they've put together for the marketing campaign, um, and see which direction they go with. And this gives them a lot more time to work with that too. True. Uh, you know the deal with the biggest concern that I had uh, was that it was July and we still hadn't heard anything about flighting and or even a beta. Mm-hmm. That's what was really concerning me. Um, and I still hope that they have some type of flighting program for Halo Infinite plan, you know, to start at the beginning or spring of next year, uh, because I would really like the community to be able to give their feedback on the multiplayer with a few exceptions. Halo five was, you know, one of the most favorite multiplayers that I've had 
out of all the games I've played, not just the Halo games. Same. Yeah. You know, there are some exceptions that I strongly disagree with the adjustments that were made. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Spartan Charge was one of them. Uh, I don't like the change that they made between the beta and the production game. But you know, other than, you know, they're minor things. They, they're not, they don't make it to where the gameplay becomes unfun. And that's the most important thing for, you know, at least for me, is I want to have fun playing the game. Mm -hmm. Well, anybody who plays a, a shooter is a competitive person. But I'm not the super ultra gotta win every game player. Basically, I want a game that challenges me and that I feel that if I lose, it's because somebody played better than me or mm -hmm. because, because of the decisions that I made in how I approached the game. Sure. You know, I, like me and Dust were talking before earlier. Uh, I would much rather have a game where you have players that are within five kills of each other. <laughs> yep. Instead of one player that has all the kills and all the rest of the players have like three kills. It just, right. You know, that's not a fun game to me. You know, I want a competitive game where we're trading back and forth. But anyway, I, I look forward to seeing what they do for that. Yep. Me but too. we did get a lot of information on the graphical updates that they're making. And with the, what look like screenshots to me. Yep. There's some technical jargon in there as well. There's a lot of stuff in here that really talks about kind of what GT was talking about, how they felt. Like it wasn't in the state where they wanted to show it off. It was just kind of one of those things that's they had to. I mean, that's when Papa mm -hmm. Microsoft says, "Nope, you gotta show something." They're they're kind of a they kind of need to. Well, yeah, you know when your boss when your boss says do it, you you need to do it because he's You're, the one that's yeah, pretty much. <laughs> right. And I don't know about you, but I like getting my paycheck. Right. <laughs> we have another little breaking update. Uh, thanks to uh, one of our stream viewers. Uh, Keisha Dila, uh, as part of the Fortnite update, you can actually play in Blood Gulch in, for in Fortnite. Cool. So, there's that too. Uh, back to the Infinite update. We have two weapon... We, we were talking about this before I interrupted with the breaking news. But we, we have a sniper rifle and a spanker rocket launcher. Both of them look sick. <laughs> they look really good. You know what I find interesting? What? I don't think they're renders, are they? Yeah, the text says in engine renders. Oh, okay, they are renders. Never mind. Yeah. Uh, I was just um, uh, looking at the Spart Spartan leaning against the uh, the table, the platform, or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. I kind of wonder if that's a like an inspection space you can go into. Well, yeah, I'm wondering if it's like an armory because they're yeah. talking about like they've talked about in the past like weapon skins and vehicle skins and that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. like this might be the place where you apply a skin and then you can inspect your weapon with that skin. Yeah, kind of like uh, uh, Forza's garage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Except for weapons, but like. Well, I think it's probably going to be for everything. If it exists, like I said, we're right, right. This is hypothetical territory here. We're inferring some things here <laughs> because, you know, in the background of these photos, we have vehicles. Yep. Uh, we have a Spartan. We have, you know, of course, a weapon front and center. And it looks like it's inside of some type of building. And like I said, I wonder if it is something very similar to like Forza's garage. To where you can go in and see a high res picture of what something looks like. I think. It yeah, might, I could see that. I looking could see that. at this, it looks like it might be more than just what the wet weapon skin looks like on the you know, on the weapon itself. I think mm -hmm. this is some place where you can get like a high, a you know, a real highly rendered look at what things look like. Yeah. No, I, I agree. It it looks like it's almost like that, that kind of armory 
type of experience that you mm-hmm. would actually actually experience. And these weapons look so good. Like there's 4K oh, yes. ver- if you click on the images there's 4K versions of each one of them. And they look so clean, but they have the right like to me they have the right kind of amount of scuff to them that mm-hmm. makes them believable. They look used. Yeah, but it looks so good. Mhm. And I like the on the sniper and the the spanker that we have, just the contrast of the orange. Like you have some of the orange arrows that's kind of like loading and unloading pieces on the spanker. You have some orange rings on the sniper rifle and some other orange accents on the rocket launcher. Like and I'm wondering if this is just like one, maybe one skin set. So maybe these part of the same kind of skin set. I think maybe? this is probably like the base texture. Yeah, well, yeah, any, yeah. Before be. any skin is applied. That's true. But gosh, they look they look really nice. Mm-hmm. They look really, really nice. Yeah, I'm busy busy adding these to my uh <laughs> desktop wallpaper rotation. <laughs> my desktop wallpaper rotation. <laughs> yeah. Uh in the interview there's lots of technical jargon as well as far as some of the technologies that they've been working on to address some of the th- things that were pointed out in the July gameplay demo. Things mm-hmm. about d- dynamic lighting and draw distances, different kind of like engine specific things that they're changing to get things working. They even have a little section here about Craig. Yeah. At the point of the demo, they didn't have some of the facial animation features turned on, which is why we, we got Craig. <laughs> Obviously, that wasn't the intent, so they're they are planning on. In other words, they never they didn't calculate that the community would look at the trailer frame by frame to get a shot of Craig's face. They they should know better by now <laughs> that the community does a frame like just well, the yeah, internet know. does frame by frame analysis uh, of these things. I must inspect. Oh. <laughs> it's you know they didn't yeah they, they basically when they did the trailer they didn't have everything turned on because right. some of it was still in development it was mm-hmm. basically a first look at the game pretty much and unfortunately it got a little blown out of proportion but a little you know with <laughs> reading through this you know a lot of the problems that the community had with the trailer or the the gameplay demo are stuff that they were already going to address. Mhm. Uh there were there were some things that uh they hadn't realized that the community didn't bring to their attention. But for the most part, all the stuff that we that most people were complaining about on the gameplay is just stuff they hadn't gotten to yet. Yeah. And this should hopefully clear up a lot of either that confusion or I guess really the concerns that three for three doesn't know what they're doing. Like they know what they're doing. It's just there's deadlines and crunch time and there's certain deadlines that have to be met for things like E3. So it's just kind of one of those things that it was just unfortunately where they were at. And it was just kind of, that extra little bit of evidence that yeah we're we're not going to be ready by by November so yeah. they decided you know, honestly, to make that decision me, to delay and- I was truly impressed at how well it, how well it did look considering a they're building a brand new engine b covid yeah <laughs> um and c they're taking a whole new out a whole new look at halo they're taking halo in a new direction mm-hmm. well a new old direction but anyway, <laughs> so I thought it looked really good, and I thought it looked as good as I would expect at that point, because I knew what they were using and what they showed us was probably older than what they, earlier than what they were actually currently working on. But, you know, that's beside the point. I like how they go through and they talk about each individual issue. Mm-hmm. Uh, they tell 
tell us what they're doing to correct it, and that there is more to come. You know, just like with what they said about Craig. He's the meme that will live forever in Halo history. Yep. But he's getting an update. Yes. And obviously there's there's going to be more discussions about direction and we'll get more updates in the future. But mm-hmm. they do address pretty much all the concerns that people had and really just kind of reassuring us that, yeah, we we are like we weren't happy either. And you just kind of help validate what we were feeling. And they decided to make that delay decision. And Mm -hmm. like, we're going to get a good game for it. Like the rest of these screenshots too. Oh yeah. Look just incredible. And like the next, this is how it looks while you're playing the game. Oh my God. Yeah. The next, the next section in here is live and customization. And we have Ryan Paradis, who's the design director for the live team, and then Chris Bloom, or Blom, and he is the lead progression designer. And there's... I, I, I voiced my concern over the coding system before, and like the removal of primary and secondary colors, how it's, it's, how it's going to impact player customization, player identity. But after seeing these screenshots, sure, I'll take, I'll take codings. Sure, these look dang awesome! You know, that's... And with all the attachments, too, it's it's like, mm-hmm. like, they weren't kidding with, when they were talking about about reach-style customization. Like, you know, I just... Gosh! I understand that people are upset because 343 took something away. Look at what you're getting. Yeah. And really look at what you're getting. Yeah. Yes, the shaders are preset by 343. But, and here's a big but, Mm -hmm. the number of shaders they can generate now will pale in comparison to what we had before. Yeah. Yeah, this is, this is going to be, this is going to just be crazy. With what they've shown here, I'm really interested to see what you can do with the customization system. Yeah. Like, like, this is. This blew all my concerns out of the water once I saw these. I'm like, okay, yep, I, I'm, I'm, to- I'm okay with this now. <laughs> and there's going to be people out there who still think, like, not having the primary and secondary colors is, I mean, is going to be an yes, issue. Am I, which, yeah, am I sad that the primary and secondary color system is going? Yes. Yeah. Am I going to miss it? From what I see here, no. Right. And depend depending on how many they come out with, and obviously there'll be lots of stuff with season passes and whatnot, but mm-hmm. yeah. They, they've they mentioned in here too that there's a lot of classics as far as customizations and, and that kind of stuff I think that they want to support and they'll keep on bringing out throughout season updates and whatnot, but like you have a George armor remake that's kind of in here in one mm-hmm. of the screenshots. It's the Noble Defender armor coating. Yeah. They show off the watchdog armor coating and weapon skin, which will be what you get for achieving that 152. Mm-hmm. So that's cool to finally get that little uh, piece of content. Something I noticed too, I <laughs> I don't know if a lot of people have noticed this before, and I don't think other Halo games have, have done this in the past, but in the one multiplayer, the second multiplayer screenshot and in, in the watchdog armor coating screenshot, you can actually see the toes bend. Mm-hmm. I don't think a Halo game's done that before. At like least I don't said, recall this, one. It's like I mean that was just a little minor detail thing, but in that you know, in that so called armory. Uh well no, it's it's in the multiplayer sh- screenshot too. Oh, huh? I didn't Or the, the work in progress piece. You mean the green Spartan? So the screenshot right below the sniper rifle. Oh, yeah, the, I guess. The second yeah, multiplayer map. I hadn't noticed that before. Yeah. Anyways, that's that's a that was just a minor thing, but it's kind of like it's kind of like one of those reassuring things of they're oh wow they're really paying attention to detail on some of these things now, so that's going to be really cool. Well, to... something that you, that uh, was pointed out earlier by another YouTuber, uh, mm-hmm. I think it, what, who was it? Who was I watching? Oh, Ultimate Halo. The green visor actually has a different texture on it. 
the the Splinter Desert one? Yes. Yes. Yes, it does. It has it, a little it actually like, dotted have, pattern on it. Yeah. Where all the rest of them are, you know, like a smooth, mm-hmm. you know, like your traditional, you know, your traditional visor. That one's actually textured, so there, yep. there's a possibility you'll actually get visor textures as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, there's a lot of really cool, cool things with this coding system. That's that I'm now, mm-hmm. like, I'm excited for the coding system now. Like it's still, it is going to suck to lose that primary secondary color system, but what we've seen in this update, yeah. I'm excited for it. And if this is the same kind of customization we're going to get with vehicles yeah. and weapons, then more power to them. The biggest part of this entire portion of this article, no loot boxes. No, no loot boxes. No game altering purchasables. Yes. And there's nothing in the customization that will alter gameplay. Right. Thank goodness. Because <laughs> uh, we've seen how the industry has handled those and how the community really doesn't like it. So, again, again but, there's a lot more detail in yeah. the article if you want to go check it out. There's four different, well, I guess technically five, but one's just the Watchdog armor in two different poses. Mm-hmm. But there's five different images of armor coatings in here. The first one is holding an AR. Uh, second one's holding an AR. Third one's holding, a, I think, the bulldog. Uh, and then the fourth one is holding a BR. So, really cool stuff in here. Not not nearly as concerned anymore with coding system as I, I was before this update. I'll say that much. Uh, and then from there... We have the last little bit from Joe Staten kind of wrapping things up. So I'm just going to, there's a screenshot that accompanies this as well, which is freaking wicked. Yeah. Yeah. It just screams Halo. Yeah. It's sunset on a Halo. Uh Uh-huh. Well, sun's set. Right. Two suns. And it has the, the, the hexagon pattern of like, the pieces of the halo and there's a mm-hmm. little foreigner facility in the background some kind of floating building of some kind oh, but yeah, here's it, here's what joe has it, to say uh, to wrap things up i'm fortunate to have worked with an incredible with incredibly talented teams in my whole career my the infinite team is no exception folks here just don't understand halo they love the core gameplay and characters and community everything that makes halo halo just as much as i do and like me they also feel a deep responsibility to serve We aren't making this game for us. We're making it for you. Starting with this update, we're going to be sharing more about what we're doing and most importantly, why we're doing it. So here are a few things I'd like to share. My first week on the job, I played the entire Infinite campaign twice. I was in a word... (laughs) Right? I was in a word stunned in the best way possible by what the team had done. Infinite is by far the most expansive and vertical Halo world ever. Why did the team do this? Because they understand that wonder and freedom are key to the Halo experience. So see, even even Joe, a Bungie vet who was there in the initial stages of Halo's development, is coming into Infinite and saying, these guys know what they're doing. So hopefully that gives a lot of people out there that are worried or want like the classic Halo back Hopefully that gives them a little little more relief. A big secret. I don't want the classic Halo back. Well, not not to say that we want the classic Halo back, but if if someone who was there in the yeah. time when classic Halo was developed and they're coming into infinite development and saying, yes, they're hitting all the notes that classic Halo hit. Not saying that it's the classic experience, but if it's hitting everything that defines what Halo is, I mean, there's not really any other person except maybe Marty who you could go to or um um Jason I'm forgetting, Jason, I'm forgetting his last name. Jones? That's it, thank you. <laughs> who you could go to and, and give them something and it's like, does this feel like Halo to you? And if they say yes overwhelmingly, then it's like, okay, stamp of approval, <laughs> it's Halo. Well, in these closing statements, there is one line that 
just it reeks of what he's trying to tell us. I could feel the classic Halo 30 seconds of fun beating at the heart of Halo Infinite's world. Mm-hmm. And yep. for those of you that have been around, you know what that means. Yes. That was a core development of Halo's 1, 2, 3, ODST, and Reach. That 30 seconds of fun over and over again. Yep. And Joe's experience is that it's still there, Mm -hmm. which is really cool. Going on, but I've never had felt more powerful, more mobile, more in command of a rich set of tactical choices. This was the Halo we imagined back in 2000 finally come to life after 20 years of technical and creative innovation. Sure, there were bugs in the build and certainly more work to do, but this concept art by Martin DeChambault. Sorry that we butchered your name, Martin. Right. One of the many incredible pieces he's made for the game. And that's that last screenshot. It encapsulates all the excitement and curiosity and joy I felt my first journey through Zeta Halo, the most mysterious, dangerous, and possibly rich place in the entire, entire Halo universe. Everywhere I looked, I saw choices. Do I explore, explore off the Golden Path? Assault that Banshee war base guarding the Valley Pass. Follow a flight of foreigner sentinels into that unexpected cavern. Rescue a squad of Marines dug in a desperate hallway up that mountain. Or do I keep pulling the mainline story thread that feels epic and intimate at the same time? Truly, Halo Infinite is a world in which I love spending time and that I'm thrilled to return to, both as a designer and a player. On behalf of the entire team, thank you for your patience and your passion. We can't wait for you to join us on the Halo Infinite adventure, first with Insider Flighting ne- later next year, and then and when we ship in fall 2021. And there it is from the horse's mouth. With the delay, we have the opportunity to actually have that Insider Flighting that they mm-hmm. had promised, promised us before. Mm-hmm. He's got me pumped about this world that they're developing. Yeah. Like if the, like, this is this is the nice little Christmas bow on the end of Halo news for this year. Mm-hmm. Like we're going to have our our Halo twenty twenty retrospective for the next episode next week, and I mean this this will be up there with that that Xbox Game Showcase eight minute reel, eight minute no, gameplay. No, no, demo. I think this this one just got to the top of my list. <laughs> To be fair, the gameplay was a, was a significant piece of it, yes. too. But, yeah, this was certainly a welcomed update. And yes. we, like Brian, or Sketch said that there was going to be an update this month. I wasn't expecting it to drop within the first week of December. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, they had to give us something to chew on, chew on until the end of the year. <laughs> Didn't want to soil our Christmas dinner with excitement, right? I'll tell you what, this, I like the way, the format of the article, I like the way they talked to us and not told us, Uh, and 343's always been good at that. Yeah. I've seen a lot of people actually compare this to how Bungie used to do some of their updates. Yeah, they don't do their updates that way anymore. (laughs) No, they don't. So, it seems like... They're going to be trying to get into maybe a more regular cadence with the updates. So maybe we'll see something. I'm hoping at least a monthly or a bi-monthly update. Now that yeah, that'd be nice. Now that we're moving into the actual year of its release, I you know I really do think the fact that they were pushing so hard to get that demo out that put them behind on their marketing. I don't think it was intended. I really think the demo is intended to be out earlier. And then that was supposed to kind of kick off the, the hype train for Halo. Mm-hmm. Uh, except for the hype train crashed and burned. <laughs> it kind of derailed a little bit. Yeah, I'm still pumped just, just for Halo smidge. Infinite. <laughs> I'm chomping at the bet, bit for more information. Like I said... I'm hoping for a monthly or at least a bi-monthly update on the production of Halo Infinite. 
they don't really have to give me any details about the game play or anything. Just where they stand in development. Yeah. You know, maybe give us a, you know, you know, a up close personal look at the assault rifle or, you know, the BR or, you know, any of the weapons, you know, anything that's already been uh, already out in the wild. You know, they don't have to, they don't necessarily have to show me anything new. Give me more details about what is already out there in the wild. Mm hmm. Well, and there's still a lot that we don't know. So they could really come up mm-hmm. with anything at this point and it'd be Oh, news. there's a lot about the it'd game. It'd be news. Though. Yeah. Uh I'm really looking forward to a more deep dive into the customization of the the Halo sandbox as far as the player, the vehicles, the weapon skins, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Yep. It'll come in time. I don't know if we'll see another uh, well, we might see an update in January. Um they mentioned in here about like giving people the break for the holidays and coming back in January. Mm-hmm. So depending on when people come back, we might not see a next update until maybe early February. But after that, I wouldn't be expecting it uh, until February. If anything, it'd be very late January. Yeah. So, you know, honestly, way, I don't think they'd probably be doing much for the next at least four weeks. Right. Especially given how the year has gone. Like, give people time to kind of relax and rejuvenate and spend time with maybe immediate family. (laughs) Yeah. Try to forget 2020 ever happened. (laughs) Right. So, go read the update. There's a lot of stuff that we didn't cover. There's some technical jargon regarding the graphics and the concerns that people had with the Mm -hmm. Xbox Game Showcase gameplay demo, which... I think they kind of put that to bed with this. So we do have a community spotlight. It is holiday filled. There's lots of cool stuff in it. Uh, I'm not going to switch the screens. I'm just going to kind of pick and choose what we had gone, gone over the, the creme de la creme. The very first thing is a halo version of the peanuts kind of classic Christmas style Uh, has Cortana as Lucy and Chief as it's Linus, right? Yes. In this in this pose, okay, yeah. Chief's playing the piano. That's yep. four inches tall. Oh, yep. <laughs> uh, that's the creme de la creme. It's made by Kraken Coalition. Or, yeah, Coalition. And then we have the snack break, which is a twenty seventeen one of those like a. Uh, Musical houses with the Christmas lights. And this is to the Halo 2 theme song. And they did Lewis a really Harmony. good job with it. I've seen a few of those before. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then your pick, GT, was the little uh, kind of tubby looking grunt. The Christmas the, grunt. Yeah. The orange scarf, the Covenant sweater, and a green and green red and, orb. Green and red globes in his hands that are. Maybe plasma grenades. I don't know. Right, right. He's Click. cute. <laughs> oh, where's Craig? <laughs> right. No, there is a lot of good stuff in this update. I do highly recommend you all go check it out. And then I picked a few Spartan by Schmintz on Reddit. There is a cover of it looks like a fanfic project by uh, Diego LZQ117. It is called Halo Midnight. There is Master Chief in a Santa Slay themed warthog that is being pulled by Moas. And the front Moa has a little red glowing hair fin on the front. So that I guess that's the Rudolph Moa. I, I wonder what they're referencing there. <laughs> <laughs> and then someone did a 3D printed plasma grenade as a Christmas ornament. Uh, Rhino 666. Honorable mentions to uh, Bathale, or Bahail. Uh, he's one of the artists that we follow normally. Uh, this one's called Drop. And then <laughs> Doodle Snickers is uh, Sam asked Pixel Flare to put a Santa hat on something for me. And she got back a Spartan mixed with a Halo 4 grunt wearing a Santa hat. You yeah. have Spartan four legs. Uh-huh. 
with a grunt body. upper body arms with a Santa hat on it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Pixel Flare, you are disturbed. <laughs> So that's the community spotlight for this week. Go check it out. There's lots of cool stuff in there. Uh, not as long as some of the past ones have been, thankfully. But there's there's lots of cool holiday stuff in there. Oh, most definitely. Uh, what have we got for our Fiction Friday? Fiction Friday. Easily one of the most critical vessels within the UNSC Navy during the course of the, course of the war, humanity's frigates are light combat ships designed for speed, maneuver, maneuverability, and firepower. Yes. And they have a little screenshot from boom. Daybreak. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> boom, boom. There is a Xbox ad for Power Your Dreams, and this one is by Moonlight Wolf, and it has Master Chief DJing with a halo ring, and then Master Chief turns out to be a kitty. <laughs> In the dream. Big surprise. You can say that's a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> Pokemon <Power> reference. <laughs> and then Monster has a an artist that they've worked with, Hydro74, that's worked on some little kind of uh, clip art style things that you can download uh, as wallpaper type stuff. So you can go check, check that out. Uh, it's on uh, Monster's website. And then the Halo Mega Constructs Pelican has been nominated for an award. Cool. For the, for the Toy Association. So there's a little bit.ly link. If you head on over to the Mega Constructs Twitter account, you can find it. Voting is still open. Uh, there's several selections up there. There's a uh, Brio Motor Set, which I don't know what that is. Lego Friends Rescue Mission Boat. Lego Star Wars The Razor Crest. There's the Mega Constructs Pelican Inbound, which is the one we're talking about. Uh, and then several other things that I don't recognize. But it's up for an award, so feel free to go on over, put your vote in. You do have to register to submit your vote, so that might be a barrier to entry for some folks. But if you want to go put your vote in and kind of give the Halo Mega Constructs team some love, then please go on over there and do that. On the community side of things this week, not too much going on. Forge Hub has their community favorites for November 2020. Lots of cool stuff in here. Lots of recurring names again. <clears throat> we have Athlon by Arthur Bloodshot coming in third place. I believe one of those maps may, was either a finalist or one of the top maps for their, their latest contest. The uh, Halo 3 Forge the Fight contest. Then we have Mag Magus by Arpod and Miraju by Hobo Steve Jacko. All names that we've seen before in, in the top three mm-hmm. spots. <laughs> no surprise there. On the community content side of things, we've got a couple of podcast updates. Not a lot, actually. The only two new podcasts that we have from the past week is episode 156 of HS Pro Talk and episode 228 of Podcast Evolved. So a really light week for, light week for podcasts. Mm-hmm. Of course, all the major YouTube channels have covered the news, but we're not going to really cover that much, or that too much. Pick one. They've they've covered it. Yeah, they've covered it. We just covered it on the podcast, so there you go. <laughs> um, Halo Cannon has his little bonus story analysis of Sacrifice, and he has his monthly recap for November 2020 as well. Uh, Installation Zero Zero has several new videos. Um, Shyway has a couple new ones as well. Uh, General Heed is up to his antics as normal. The Domain has done a review of every Halo Mega Blocks blind bag series, which is, I mean, that that's going to be quite a series. <laughs> so for any of the collectors, especially for doing the blind bags from Mega Constructs, that might be an interesting one to go watch. And then one of our extras, uh, for those who may or may not know the YouTube channel Noodle, uh, it's this person that does some animations with his videos and he's a kind of does some gaming commentary. He had an interview with Marty O'Donnell as well. So there's a lot of YouTubes out there that are getting interviews with Marty. Mm -hmm. Too bad we're not YouTubers. (laughs) I don't know if we could score an interview. And then we've got some art 
from some folks. We've got new stuff from Chomp Jurassic, Pixel Flare, Cold Protocol, Bahail, or Spartan0398, and more shots up on their Twitter. So feel free to go over and check it out. Uh, and then on the community musing side of things, we just have one Trivia Tuesday. You want to cover that one, GT? Sure, Halo PD is Trivia Tuesday. Did you know that during the lead up to Halo Legends launch, 343 Industries showed off a number of concept arts art for uh, for it on Halo Waypoint? Yep. I do remember that. Vague. I don't, but I believe it. <laughs> that was a while ago. I don't remember. Yeah, it, it was. Long. Yep. Uh, we are not going to be doing our fan projects update because of the news drop that happened today. So we'll be taking care of that another time. Next week, we're going to be doing our Halo 2020 recap. And we were planning to give away an MCC Steam code, which I think we're going to actually wait for. Halo Collector Kevin is in here. They were auctioning off a signed helmet for Toys for Tots, and that auction is concluded. So thanks for the update there, Kevin. But next week, we'll be doing our recap. So we are going to be pulling the community for what you most enjoyed about Halo, what kind of was most exciting to you, what was your most memorable moments, favorite moments, that kind of stuff. So we'll be asking folks for that. And we have a big Halo Wars 2 prize pack that we're going to be giving away next week. And I think we'll save the Steam MCC code for the podcast after, which the podcast after will be either be our project update or it will be a book podcast. It'll be one of the two. So for this podcast, that concludes what we have set up for tonight. It is really nice to see some actual infinite news that's not mm-hmm. just leaks or random people that are somewhat involved with the project coming out and giving their best guess on what they might be happening or things might be set in stone. And we actually have some firm information from the horse's mouth. And I'll, I'll reiterate this again. Anything that you hear that's not from an official sort source, take with a grain of salt and do not assume that it is factually true. Until you hear 343 repeat it and or Xbox repeat it. Exactly. As stating it that it's true. Exactly. And Prestige is just going to be for the year 2020. We, we, we do this every year. We pretty much do kind of just a a Halo or a, a Halo in 2020 or a Halo in year review type of thing. So wrapping things up, you can follow us on social media. We are on Twitter, Twitch, uh, fa- Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, all those fun spots. We have our podcast, which we record live on Thursday nights at 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. And we have our Fragment Friday, which is going to be 8.30 p.m. Eastern time on Fridays, obviously. Mm-hmm. And that's hosted by GT. Again, if you want to be partaking in it, we ask that you go over to our Discord and vote on which game you would like to play. Options are either MCC on any platform or Halo 5 on Xbox. Might be a, might be a tough pull because we have the cross on MCC, but we also have the double XP on Halo 5. True. Make your voices heard. Go over to the Discord and vote. But speaking of Discord, you can find that at podtaggler.com slash Discord. Join the community, join the discussion, come share your Halo stories, funny moments, any kind of that stuff over on the Discord, and we'll talk about it on the show. And you can also join our Spartan Company and Xbox Club. You can also find the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, TuneIn, Amazon Podcasts, and Stitcher, and pretty much anywhere else that you can find or get podcast services from. If there is a place that you listen to podcasts regularly that you cannot get us, please let us know so we can get that rectified so you can get the pod- podcast wherever you where, wherever you call your podcast home. We also have Achieving Halo that takes place on Sundays at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. I will be back on for that because hopefully I'll be done well, I'll be done with the Halo Mall by then so <laughs> don't have to worry about that anymore. But then we also have different ways you can support the community. It's been quite an overwhelming support year compared to previous years for pot tackler. So thank you so much to our Twitch subscribers for anyone who has gifted subscriptions to us over the past year. It's been quite an amazing 
just support that we've gotten over the years. Um, and then especially this year with everything going on with COVID and the pandemic and just the state of the world, the fact that we have the support that we do, even though it's, it's just a few people uh, from a monetary perspective, but just having that support means a lot to us. And we thank you for that. On the Patreon side of things, we have Confal, Pal, Pins. Pal, wow. <laughs> I can mix Confal and really? Pins. <laughs> we have Confal, Pins, and Austin Webrink uh, supporting us over on Patreon. Thank you for the support over there. We also have a place to donate if you would rather su- uh, support the show in that manner. Podtaggler.com slash donate. And all that stuff will eventually get turned out into things like giveaways, like we're doing this month, uh, potential things for tournament type stuff down the road, maybe some merch ideas uh, coming down the pipeline as well, which 2021 shall hopefully bring some of those opportunities to bear. So stick with us there. And hopefully next week we'll have DJ back in the hot seat so we can have our 2020 recap and get his impressions on the update that dropped this week because I'm sure he has quite a few things to say about it and there's probably a few things that he's excited for too. Any parting words, GT, before we wrap up this episode? No, it's just good to have some Halo Infinite news and I look forward to seeing everybody tomorrow night at 8.30pm Eastern Time right here on Twitch. If you would like to join in, feel free to shoot me a message on Xbox Live at Godzilla T. And uh, if we are on NCC, you can find me on Steam at Godzilla Todd. I have the boot licking grunt as my avatar. <laughs> the one and only. The one and only. I think you're probably the only one that has that. Probably. I haven't seen anybody duplicate it. So, with that said, everybody, stay safe out there. We will be back next week with our recap. Again, we'll be asking folks on social media. Uh, probably starting as early as Saturday or Sunday for your inputs to our show at the end of the year. And with that said, keep on fragging them trucks. 